Ah, volatility seems to be back, guys. It's currently 12.50 p.m. on the East Coast, and we have the S&P 500 down about 0.7%. We have the NASDAQ and the Dow down about 1%, and we have the Russell down 1.6% with the mighty old VIX up over 9%. So we have to break it down, talk about some stocks, some charts, my thoughts on the markets, what I'm doing now. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon if you guys want all my moves moves in the markets and you could also get five stocks free from Weeble and 50 bucks from M1 Finance. All of those are limited time linked right down below. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So it's 12:50 p.m. like I said, and volatility is back, guys. The VIX is up over 9%. We're selling off pretty much all across the board. And on my watch list, I have no green stocks other than Facebook and ChargePoint. Literally, those are the only two green stocks out of my 20 plus stock watch list right now. So it's it's bleeding out there. Uh, the markets are bleeding. And if you guys look at SPY here on the five day, five minute, you'd be surprised that we were over 472 in the pre-market. So we were super close to all time highs. If you guys remember, all time highs were back in the end of November at about 473.50, right? We got very close to that. Very, very close to that. Um, and we essentially filled that gap back up to those all time highs. And we clearly failed holding 470. I mean, look, we hit 472.50 in the pre-market. We tried holding 470 at market open, but clearly that didn't happen. And uh, we collapsed and we pretty much have been selling since the market open. And uh, honestly, since about 6 a.m. here on the East Coast, it's, uh, you know, since the pre-market into market open up until now, it's been a straight up sell off. And even now we saw a bit of a relief rally about 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes minutes ago from 466.80 on SPY up to about 468. And uh, now we're back into the mid 467s. We're getting rejected by that 50 moving average on the five day chart. And at, at this point in time, SPY is uh, it seems like it wants to sell off. And until it breaks back over 470, it's going to be in this phase where it's very choppy. We're lacking direction, and uh, you know I think volatility volatility will be uh, heightened. Um, you know under these levels between uh, 470, uh, between 460, 465. You know we're gonna be we're gonna be seeing heightened volatility over all these next couple of days due to the Fed meeting, the PPI number, retail sales. There's a lot going on in the markets right now. So I'm gonna be watching spy on the five day chart, 20 day chart, and on the four hour chart here. As honestly on the Four hour, it still looks pretty good. It's trading above both moving averages here, the 180 and the 50. So as long as we hold 465 on SPY in the short term, it, it should be okay. But the second we see a break under 470 or 465, rather, we take the moving averages out on the four hour chart. If that happens, it's not going to be good. But as long as we hold 465, we're bouncing between 465, 470. Sure, there is going to be volatility, like I said, but it's not going to be the end of the world for the Bulls until, again, we break under 465 and especially 460. We'll see what happens. That's on SPY. And for Triple Q, let's see what's going on here. Triple Q is also seeing some volatility, right? The inverse head and shoulders is still intact. We're holding not the 180. We're under that, but we're holding the 50 moving average on the four hour chart here. And you guys can see like spy, we rallied a bit. We were up a bit in the pre-market. We tried breaking 400. We were momentarily above 400 barely, uh, but it didn't hold. It didn't break. And you know, 401 is the key spot for this to break for bulls to push it to 408. We clearly didn't do that. Now we're trading at 393 and we could be going lower by the looks of it. And I think it's going to get ugly on triple Q if the neckline of this inverse head and shoulders breaks, which is right around 390. So if 390 breaks on the downside, that's not going to be good whatsoever. So I'm going to set my alert at 390 on the downside. Mark is at or below 390. If that breaks, we're probably going lower. And if we break 401 on the upside, you guessed it, we're probably going higher. So what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below. These markets are going to be nuts crazy, volatile. We have the Fed meeting Tuesday, Wednesday, 
PPI, retail sales, it's going to be wild out there. So let me know your thoughts. Hit the like button if you guys are finding value. And now let's quickly go over some stocks that I'm looking at. Number one, well, I guess you can group these together because they're similar in nature. Tesla's number one. This is down 5.5% today. It's reaching towards the bottom of this downwards channel on the four-hour chart where we have seen some mini relief rallies over the past couple of weeks. I mean, you guys can see, I can point them out. Um, you know, back in the beginning of November, we hit about a thousand bucks. We saw a rally back to 1100. You know, middle of November, we hit 980. We rallied all the way to 1200. You know, just recently on the 6th of December, we hit 960. We rallied back to about 1070. Now we're at 960 again. Pretty oversold towards the bottom of the channel. Sure, we could go 940, 950, but I think Tesla will see some sort of rally, relief rally, as long as it does hold the bottom of this channel. You know, let's say if it collapses and starts going into the 800s, that's different. But if we hold 940, 950, maybe a rally back to 1,000, 1050, definitely possible. And I'm also looking at charge point here. It's currently up over 1% on the day. And the White House released, uh, news today. It's planned on spending the $7.5 billion bucks from, I believe, the infrastructure bill on electric vehicle um, you know, infrastructure with the goal to grow the U.S.'s national EV charging network to 500,000 uh, charging stations. So we got this news. It's not too new, I guess, but in the infrastructure bill, there was a good chunk allocated to electric vehicle stations, which is great for um, charge point, which is why I'm looking at it here. So seven and a half billion dollars um, to build 500,000 charging stations. That's very good stuff um, for charge point and the whole EV network in general. And we're noticing. Charge point is still down a good chunk from 28 bucks. Now it's at 20. So just in the past couple of weeks, it's down about 30%. And in the past couple of months, if you guys take a look from the end of June, it was at 36 bucks. Now it's at 20. It's down way more than 30%. It's down more like 45% from this uh, $36 high. And let's see what the all time high on charge point is. All time high on charge point is almost 50 bucks per share. That was over a year ago. And if you're looking at that point, charge point is now. Now down 60%. So this stock is well uh, into a bear market. And I've been on record saying I will be buying a lot of charge point if it gets to 15, 16 bucks, I'm going to be loading the boat. And now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably be selling some cash secured puts on charge point, get some premium while I wait to maybe be, um, you know, assigned and, and I'd be uh, great. Uh, what's the word here? I would be glad. Let's put it that way. I'd be glad to pick up shares. Let's say if I sold put, uh, puts at like 17 bucks, I would buy the shares there anyway, and I would collect the premium. So I'm looking at Tesla charge point. I'm looking at Kroger today, KR. Kroger's making a nice move above 45, 45, 50 today. That's been a sticking point all of December after they reported good earnings. We've been seeing a lot of momentum. I think if uh, Kroger, it's already doing it, but I think if the momentum continues above 45 and to 46. We're probably going to go and test those highs from a couple of months ago at 48.50. So I like Kroger here. Um, j and J is also doing well. We're noticing a lot of the Dow stocks today. Um, even though the Dow's down 0.9%, a lot of the stocks are doing pretty well. And that's probably because, and we've talked about this a lot on the channel here, guys, that's probably because we're seeing a shift out of these high growth stocks where all their earnings are pushed into the future. We're slowly, I mean, we've been seeing this, the, the, these uh, these growth stocks, a lot of them have been decimated. So we're seeing a push out of those into companies like a J&J, &J, like a Procter & Gamble, like a Pepsi, like a Coca-Cola. Notice how all these stocks are green today. Coca-Cola's up 2.5%. Pepsi's up um, one point, or rather, rather about 1%. Procter & Gamble's up 1.4%. So we're getting a push into these stocks, the value plays that make a lot of money today, right? Today is where they're making earnings, not so much their earnings are priced into the future, like the growth stocks, if that makes any sense. And that has a lot to do with the Fed, interest rates, which we're not going to get into that rabbit hole today, but that is what we're seeing right now. And again, J&J, &J, 
It's up 1%. I think it's pretty, I don't want to say it's undervalued here from a long-term perspective because it's really not necessarily undervalued, but the chart looks pretty good. On the yearly chart, we're now breaking out of the 180 moving average. If we clear above 167 into the 170s, this is probably going to hit 180 again or, uh, or go into the 180s for the first time. It almost hit 180 back in August, but it didn't. So these are some stocks I'm looking at. J&J, Kroger, Tesla, ChargePoint, Game. GameStop, if you guys are uh, uh, acting or um, not acting, but if you guys are uh, feeling a bit, uh, you know, like a degenerate today, hey, look at GameStop, you know, GME. It's the uh, it's one of the most degenerate stocks out there if you uh, want to gamble a bit. This one's down 13% today, and it's now reaching a low on the four-hour chart. If you guys look, the low was back in April. We hit about 132. Now we're at 138. If I pull up the yearly chart, you guys can see the low on the yearly chart is $12, which is ridiculous. I mean, I wish I bought it at 12 sold at 400 I would be retired on a beach right now sipping Mai Tais and Pina Coladas. Just kidding, guys. I don't know if I'd be able to retire in my 20s and not do anything for the rest of my life. That's just not how I'm wired. But, hey, I'd have a lot more money than I have right now. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at GameStop here as it's getting to the low hundreds. Maybe this could be a gamble play. So, what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Check out my Patreon if you guys want all my buys, sells, call outs, morning update videos. Literally everything I do from trades, long long-term investments, option moves, selling options, buying options. I'm posting there in real time on Patreon, so check it out. Link down below, or you guys can go to StockSurfest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to also get your five stocks from Webull. They upped it from two to now five stocks. With any amount of money you deposit, you're getting five stocks, and that's for another couple of days, so it's limited time. Check it out. Link down below. You could also get 50 bucks free from M1 Finance. Also link down below, and with that being said, I'll catch you in the next video. I'll pop one up here. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out, guys.